Joining us now is Stephen Weikert. He is a freelance journalist for the Daily Beast and also for the Danish newspaper Extra Bladet. And he survived what he describes as an ambush by Russian troops in February. Um, Stephen, I know you were reporting at a kindergarten that had been bombed by Russian forces where kids had been injured. And, and then what happened? Yeah, I, I was on the way to the kindergarten with my colleague, and uh, we were approaching the last uh, Ukrainian checkpoint before the kindergarten uh, when uh, a Russian artillery attack hit the city and, and made some confusion. Uh, so, you know, the, the Ukrainian military was pulling into their defensive positions, and we decided to drive away due to the attack. And when we were driving away, uh, this uh, car uh, came from behind, uh, and uh, a guy stepped out when we were in a cross waiting to, to turn right and just uh, out of the blue just started shooting at us with an automatic rifle. Um, he just he just basically tried to enter his rifle into the car. Uh, it went really quick. Um, and, and you were shot, Stephen, in, in the shoulder, as I understand it, and your photographer, Emil, was shot in the back, but also in the leg with what sounds like a pretty severe wound. How is he doing? Yeah, uh, he, he was shot one bullet in each leg and then uh, one, well, two in the lower back region. And as you, as you mentioned, I was shot here through the shoulder. It, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was crazy. I, it's really hard to describe. We were sitting in the car, ready to take a right turn, and, and bullets just started flying uh, past our head, uh, you know, breaking the glass. It was extremely loud. And, and I quickly, uh, you know... I decided to make an escape and, 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 and turned right in full speed while the guy uh, kept shooting at us. Uh, and I remember that, you know, Emil was breathing very severely uh, from his right leg uh, and I could hardly like use my right arm because of this bullet that went through here. Um, so, I mean, we were just, the, the car was smoking, everything was, was, was completely like, uh, you can always say like panic, you know, uh, the, the, we had to get away from whoever was shooting us. Uh, at the same time, the car was, was almost very close at, at setting out at any point. So it, it was really uh, chaotic. I, I, look, I know you were marked as TV. I also know this was a really confusing situation that you were going through, and it's even hard maybe to piece parts of it together. But the fact is, it's incredibly dangerous to do this reporting. And I wonder if you expected it to be so dangerous and also why it's still so important to do the reporting. Yeah, uh, it, uh, it is extremely dangerous anytime to cover a wall and to go to the city that we went to is always with a risk. But I think we, uh, we have to go back in time and, and the time when we were shot at, uh, Nobody was reporting that they were that you know they were shooting directly at 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 press you know at at the at the at the at the journalists working in the region you know that was always we've seen for example the CNN here as well you know covering rushing landings you know and filming all that kind of stuff without being shot at but suddenly that changed and I think the example with me and Emil was was the first one where we where we saw the press but it, it deliberately attacked that's how I see it as I see it as a deliberately attack on the press. Um, and which was following by all these other incidents, uh, as you also mentioned uh, before. But I think that uh, for me personally, it was just a very important job to do uh, despite the risk. But I think that now looking back, if we knew the same things as we, as we know now, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's just much more risky to do now because the, the press seemed to be deliberately a target. Mm -hmm.